I'm here with uh, Ben Sabi, composer, performer, and we're going to play a little music for you guys. We're going to talk about music. We're going to geek out on music. So if you're really into geeking out, this is the place to be, but not too geeky so it's awkward or weird, right? Um, it could get weird. Hopefully it'll get weird. This is the first time we've really played together. It is, yes. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, because I, I do know this about you, that some of your early music experiences, actually, I listen to too. So I was wondering, I was wondering if you could uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, are you talking about Cat Stevens? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, got, we locked in on Cat Stevens, <laughs> yeah. which was so, so crazy. Uh, yeah, my parents are... Um, uh, what, what can I say? This is going to be on YouTube, right? They're going to actually see this. This could go places. Yeah, don't say bad things about <laughs> your say, parents. But anyway, they... Um, Please don't bad mouth. Them. Not super musical. My mom does play the piano. Yeah. Um, but she, they had the foresight to get me into great music lessons. That's how I got started. Yeah. But, but what we had in the house was a record player and a collection of records. And it was Cat Stevens <laughs> um, as the greatest hits. The one Tea with the blue the flag man. on it. You know that one with the blue flag on it? Anyway, listening to... Peace Train is like the first yeah. memory that I have of music. And I think you were playing, when we were jamming, you were playing a little bit of that, right? I was. <laughs> yeah, you were playing a little bit of Peace Train. I thought I heard it. Maybe it's in a little bit of everything that I do. <laughs> Probably. Maybe. But just the feeling that I yeah. had listening to Peace yeah. Train, it was just like, <laughs> I felt like he was like ripping my soul open. I know that well, sounds has, weird has, to say that, but no, he has an amazing voice. I was right? really young, like I had never really. I mean, I was you yep. know didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 from Cat Stevens to uh, it's interesting because we've had we've had several conversations and we've talked about improvisation in different ways and we've had different people out and stuff like that. So how do mm -hmm. you go? How do you how do you correlate the Cat Stevens to the to uh, improvising on uh, electronics? Um, I don't. <laughs> really? Um, that was just the first experience that I could remember with music and yeah. it was super powerful. Um, but I had a great piano teacher growing up and yeah. she um, made improvisation a part of our regular curriculum. So, so I you was, were studying Bach and you were doing... Yeah, I was you playing were, Mozart regular, yeah. and doing the standard repertoire. But, and then but she'd be like, go. She had the, well, she had the foresight to make that an integral part of our lessons. And I had group lessons with other students. Yeah. And she had a number of pianos in her studio. And we would choose like a category, like a color or a mood or sometimes like a sport or something like that. And then everybody would have to pick something from that category and improvise. And then everybody else would try to guess what they were portraying. And... So, uh, which is a... Yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm, first I'm trying to imagine a group lesson on piano, because I've had those on guitar, but a group <laughs> lesson on a piano with like five pianos, that's got to be well, really, actually, really, uh, that's got to sound Ivesian. It, well, yeah, no, there were some Ivesian moments for yeah. sure. Uh, but it, it was like theory lessons too. I had piano and theory. I had mm -hmm. a really wonderful piano teacher. She's, yeah. she's the reason why I'm sitting here today. And how old were you during these lessons? What, the one, the um, from an early age and all the way through high school and oh, even wow. into college a little bit. Cool. Yeah. So I studied with her for a long time. Lois Sollenberger wow. in Denver, Colorado. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah. So improvisation was a part of my early education. And I would go home. And instead of practicing my Mozart, I would just improvise all the time. <laughs> so I never became a concert pianist. Um, but really? Yeah. I know. It's amazing. To, I thought you, yeah. I thought that was something When you hear me play the piano, did. it's shocking to think that I'm not yeah. a concert pianist. But, but I'm not. I don't practice the piano, uh, but I uh, I learned how to compose. I learned how to compose by just improvising. Right, and on that's my something own. that we've talked about too, like this idea that you use improvisation sort of to harness it. I know that you and yeah. I both have a love of Takamitsu. Yes. So the improvisational side brought into the compositional side. Yeah. Um, just n knowing that I can sit down at an instrument and. Tr uh, Ideas that I have can come through my fingers and out of the yeah. instrument, I guess. I am a doctor. So if you need some... There have been more air quotes <laughs> yeah. so far today that I really I'm wanted to get that in. comfortable with. <laughs> so air quotes are the say. worst. Air quotes are the worst, except, in, <laughs> except around the word doctor. I, I should introduce myself as Dr. Sebi all the time. That would be really... That would actually be great to like, like 200 students at a time. Hello, I'm... 
talk to <laughs> Sabies. <laughs> yeah, because well, I can't, a good way I can't to... actually help anyone. Yeah, but um, I have a PhD. I don't know. Kind of ridiculous. Music helps people. People, do, uh, music, music does maybe help people. helps people no, it, more it, than, true. than regular doctors. Probably sometimes. that's true. It's preventative medicine. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I, I was just going to say one thing about <laughs> how I how I write music, which yeah. is. Um, it is always improvisation for me. Uh, yeah, see, that's what that, that was the interesting yeah. part that, and I've heard you say that several times. Steve Adams was out here and different mm -hmm. different performers and and talking about improvisation, and you talked about how you see improvisation as like essential to your composition yeah. process. Yeah, because I'm uh, it's always very hands on for me. I can never I can never approach composition from sort of an abstract viewpoint, and I can't use like matrices or tone rows or hmm. a lot of pre. I do I do sketch things out formally and stuff like that, but um, it basically boils down to improvisation. And I feel, um, I do feel, I would, um, I would never equate my abilities as a composer with this, with this composer, but I do feel a kinship with, with Charles Ives in that sense, that I feel like he was all about experimentation. Yeah. And there are some great recordings of him sitting at his piano recording himself, playing and singing, and there are multiple takes where he's trying different things out. And so I don't know, I, I feel like I'm, so you feel like you're kind of like a modern day Ives. <laughs> That's so I would stuff like, that I would say that to you. I would it's like, like in you my, should just own that. You in should just say yes, I, I feel that I am. <laughs> in my wildest dreams, I would love to aspire to that, but um, I would yeah. never be so pretentious as to claim that I that I am. I mean, I, I think Ives is... You could, change, Ives, you could change the date of all your compositions I, as well. Well, anybody, everybody yeah. does that. Right? <laughs> I, I, although it doesn't matter, we're in a, we're in a postmodern world, so... Yeah, uh, here's what, I'll say one thing about postmodernism, and then we could talk about you, or we could talk about electronics. Um, Everybody knows me because it's my show. Okay, you, you know are, what I'm saying. But you we are could talk about the famous. Like, about we, the. I think you guys. We we want to talk about the electronics. Post okay. What post, you're playing. Postmodernism means that it's no longer a linear progression. It's away from center. Wow. Radiating in all directions. So toward the past is one valid. That's heavy. Direction of yeah. radiation. Yeah. Toward continuing on a straight path toward the future is another one, but then there, it's uh, radically symmetrical in all yeah. directions. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, I uh, we like Takamitsu, Toru yeah. Takamitsu, great Japanese composer. Yeah. One of the things I admire about him is that he uh, was recognized and uh, by the avant-garde establishment of the time, but he also wrote a lot of beautiful film scores yeah. and. Pretty cheesy music for TV film, uh, TV shows. That's right. Um, he also arranged Beatles, Beatles tunes. He for arranged the Beatles tunes for the guitar. He yep. loved uh, Broadway musicals. Yep. He was he whistled show tunes all the time. Yeah. Um, so he was really open-minded in that way. He was east and west, and yeah. he swam in the ocean that has no east and west. It's, uh, he talks about it that way. I think. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's that's like you. You're like that. Um, so would you say you're so a modern, modern day modern Takamitsu? Yeah, I'll own that. I'm I mean, a modern I'll, day I'll definitely Ives, own and that. you're a modern day Takamitsu. Wow, yeah. Yeah, I think that's we should end the we should whatever we're talking or whatever this is that we're doing here. We should we should just end it now. Yeah, because I'm feeling really good about us. Yeah, so. But you've uh, you scored a film called Super Size Me, which yeah. was nominated for an Academy Award. Yeah, and you write music, cheesy music for video games. Can I call it cheesy? Or uh, the the games are cheesy, but Anyway, you write music for video games. Well, this is your interview now. I don't you know? actually know your I don't know your <laughs> video game music very well, but uh, but then you also write uh, concert music. Yeah. You have a double string quartet, and uh, who who uh, what have you written in the serious uh, nerdy concert music? String quartet, and orchestra pieces, um, music for solo clarinet. That's pretty geeky. So what about the instrument? So tell me the instrument, uh, the, okay. the instrument that you're playing today. Yeah, so this is a Moog Sub 37. Um, it's a modern um, descendant of the Mini Moog, I think. Uh, um, yeah, I to tread lightly, there'll be maybe some analog experts out there watching this and they'll write comments. But yeah, I, you'll get death threats get <laughs> on, on, on social media. Uh, it's a beautiful <laughs> instrument. Um, it's got the beefy Moog sound. Yeah. Uh, it's good for it's good for bass sounds, but it, I mean it can make any kind of sound you can think of really. Uh, and it's fun because you uh, feel like the sound is it's an analog sound, right? There's no there's no digits inside this. The sound is being made by 
an actual transistor, which um, I, somehow that makes it feel more real. And when you interact with it, you uh, have knobs and you have keys and you're yeah. not coding and you're not in front of a computer. And yeah. um, it's fun because you you never know exactly or you often don't know exactly what's going to happen when you grab a knob and twist it. And so there's there's a sort of improvisation inherent in learning the instrument and playing with it and finding the sounds that it can make. And you know, you can sit with it for hours and and days and weeks and then still feel like you could come in and suddenly discover something totally new that you didn't know it could do. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if I can play some yeah, sounds. Please. Can I play some sounds? So, um, I mean, the, the, the sound that we're going to use in our performance later that's really great is this drone sound, which is just a really low tone that um, I open up the filter on and I have the resonance set pretty high so it can isolate the overtones, the right. natural overtones that right. are in the sound. And just doing that feels like, you know, you're suddenly in a Tibetan temple or something, right? And you... Yeah, and that was the thing. So when we were playing that I was finding all the harmonics up here. Yeah. So it made me want to go to those harmonics. This bass is crazy with harmonics, so. I yeah, like that. so you can really feel the natural overtones and the ones that are um, out of tune with the yeah. regular tuning system, and so that's fun. That's a fun mo. That's a that's a you know, classic mogi sound, right? Just opening up a filter like that on a low tone. Um, but then one time I was in here messing around and I just found this this thing and. Like, I don't even touch it. I, there's nothing I can do to You should not it. touch it. I can just turn it down. You should definitely not touch that. But that's just uh, some weird interaction between the two LFOs that I have set. One, uh, one is on a, uh, the LFO is sent to uh, a ramp wave, and the other one is on a, a random wave. And yeah. they're just interacting with each other, creating this sort of endless stream of never repeating. Ne the, it never repeats exactly the same way. That's not that's not one of the presets that's built into this. <laughs> that's yeah, not, yeah, that's yeah. not a very useful sound for for <laughs> Bob Marley or the yeah. Beatles or <laughs> whoever was playing these instruments Cat in Stevens. the early days. Cat Stevens. I yeah. think he used a lot of Moog. Yeah. Since. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Moog or Moog? Uh, well, Robert Moog was the person who designed and invented yeah. these things, and he called himself Robert Moog. Oh, okay. so so we should stick with that. There are some British people who say Moog, but yeah. I just think that's. Oh. Uh, but the factory in, I think it's Asheville, North Carolina, is um, yeah. still there. And they make all their stuff in-house by hand. And we're giving a commercial for Moog now. I mean, they're doing, <laughs> they're doing great. The, the, I mean, analog, analog electronics has, uh, has seen a major renaissance lately. Yes, yes. Uh, we finally, the, the whole digital thing and the excitement over digital technology has sort of run its course and now we're realizing, hey, you know what, there was some really cool stuff yeah. with modular synthesizers yeah. and with vinyl and, and that we're missing now. Like after a while we start to miss that stuff and so yeah. it all comes back. The beauty of course is that the digital is still, is also there now and, and we can use them together. In yeah, fact, I, it, yeah. I'm, I have a max patch here. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Where I can, uh, I can control with the aftertouch on the Moog, it can go through max and then back over here to control um, the, uh, the, uh, the speed of the LFO. So I can play something like this. And then the harder I press, the faster the LFO gets. And then I and can- And that's all coming from max. And that's being controlled by oh, max, okay. yeah. Um, among other things, I'm working on a big project I'll be doing next, next year where uh, for piano and electronics and the sound of the Moog, it's for eight channels, so eight, eight channel yeah. spatialization. So the sound can be sent around the hall based on where I play on the Moog. And so that's another sort of interface between digital and analog yeah. technology. Um, so that is a sweet axe you have there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. You're talking about the bass, right? The bass, yes. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> is that, um, the, is that the, the, the right term? I mean, do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? When yeah, I say that? axe yeah. is usually for guitar players, but I'll let it pass because right. there's a fifth <laughs> string. That's a fifth string. So. This is a super cool bass. I told, uh, so the, so I don't know if you know this story, but I, so my son got really into going to Guitar Center. He was playing guitar and I've always wanted to get a five string. 
right? Mm -hmm. But I've only had four string basses. I play yeah. fretless. And, Who doesn't want to play? Yeah, string? and so um, I would, and I always wanted to get one of these acoustic. I used to play upright bass, but I stopped playing a long time ago, and I always wanted an acoustic -y instrument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? of course, yeah. So um, I would go in while he was there. I'd go into the room, and I'd play these thousand dollar, two thousand dollar Jacksons, and they were terrible. The, the intonation mm -hmm. was, you know, these basses are huge, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, so the intonation. It's hard to keep the intonation you know, in tune yeah. over the entire length of the instrument. In. So yeah. you notice that, like those, those, those harmonics. This mm -hmm. bass is pretty in tune mm -hmm. harmonically all the way up, mm -hmm. you know, through, through the upper partial harmonics. So I was playing all these instruments. I didn't like them. I, I picked this one off the shelf, off the, the wall, and it had been strung incorrectly. It was actually strung backwards. <laughs> oh, and I played it, but I'm like, this thing feels great. Um, so I said, how much do you guys want for it? They're like 200 bucks. I'm like, really? And with a case, too. So nice. I was like, okay, great. I'll take that. <laughs> um, and then um, I had to wait 30 days because, you know, they have to put a hold on it just in case it's stolen. Uh, you know, so I got my base. And use. then I took it to uh, the person who sets up my instruments for me. And he looked at me quizzically and he was like, really? You got this thing? And actually, another interesting thing is I told him I wanted to. Most people, when they get a five-string base, they tune the low string down to a B. So you get the low B. So essentially, it's like a regular bass with a super low sound. Ah, but yeah. I find that to be not good. Like maybe on six string basses, you know, mm -hmm, with electric mm -hmm. basses. But for this, it sounded all farty and mm -hmm. tubby and not yeah. nice. So I wanted, also, I wanted to explore, you know, up yeah. here. And I can go up past yeah. guitar register here. Mm -hmm. So I strung it up to the C instead, which he was like, okay. And, you know, you can't can't buy strings for it so you have to buy six string bass sets and get the fifth string uh -huh. out of there so I strung it up to the high C so that I can go up yeah you know it just sounds beautiful up yeah, here it does it's just got a great sound um and so it the really, lowest string is an E like it the would lowest be string is strong exactly regular, like a regular bass so E A D G yeah. except I have the high C so it's it's almost like the first five strings of a guitar mm -hmm. exactly like the first but not almost Almost like it is the first five strings of the guitar, and so. But I actually was surprised. So this is an Epiphone, and it's a Korean instrument. Um, it also has a pickup built uh -huh. inside of it, which is nice. Although I, you know, prefer the acoustic sound. Yeah. Um, and I'm playing it through the bass amp. You can't see off screen, which is a uh, an acoustic image amplifier, which is mostly made for acoustic bass players. Mm -hmm. So I really like just the natural. Mm -hmm. Organic, like, like Charlie yeah, Hayden for me sound. is like godlike mm -hmm. as a bass player. He's like, you know, number one Desert Island bass players. Mm -hmm. You know, he also was a very sweet guy, so you could take him with you to a Desert Island nice. if you took him. But <laughs> that's, that's this, I love this bass and I've been playing it and I was not, it took me a while to really get my mind around the fifth string. Like at first you're just like, oh, it's so fun. I could go like this or I could make chords or like, you know, you start going like that, you know. Yeah. But, but really what I've discovered is it's, not so much the chordal instrument, but having, melodic, you know, the melodic, melodic aspects up, yeah. up high yeah. Yeah. that are really intriguing to me. So it took me a while to get my mind around the fifth string, and I feel like I'm still finding new things. Mm -hmm. And like I said, with the harmonics on this instrument, you know. Yeah, really beautiful harmonics. Like we were, like, even the off, off, yeah. That sounds nice, right? Yeah. So we should do more of that stuff. Yeah. You know, when we play. Um, but it's a it's a beautiful instrument. I really love it, and I feel fortunate to have uh, yeah to have gotten it. Yeah. And I like your idea of having uh, I'm I'm playing analog synth, and you yeah. wanted something more acoustic. They're from really different sound worlds. Yeah. And I'm a little bit concerned about how they mesh with each other. Uh, and since we're just Playing together for the first time, that's something we may talk about at some point. But um. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's the part, the interesting part for me, what, what about improvisation is that, you know, it's, it's constantly just, a, it's, it's really this process of us discovering stuff, yeah. you know. So, you know, I'll play a lot of stuff that is natural to me, and you'll play stuff that's natural to you, and then at some point, hopefully... At some point, it'll, it'll fuse. Yeah. yeah, we'll fuse together. I think we're starting to find some of that yeah. stuff already yeah. with the sounds. But, yeah, I like that idea of sort of a natural acoustic, more acoustic world and the electronic world, and... It's a postmodern concept. Right? That's, <laughs> and 
that's what we yeah. started with. <laughs> It's something that Ives would appreciate too, right? Like yeah, and Cat Stevens. And I think Cat, Cat Stevens, Stevens yeah. would dig it. He's still alive, right? Isn't he? Yeah, oh yeah. So he can, recently started performing again too. He might watch this and he might, you know, phone in. Maybe he can will. Can he phone in? Oh, Maybe I would. I would in. be. Yeah. And he would probably. I don't think I would get starstruck meeting anybody except Cat Stevens. Probably, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Celebrities cool. are like no big deal, but yeah, like Cat Stevens, that would be cool. I think, I, yeah. I'd he disavowed the whole performance thing for a long time. He did. But he's recently come back and started performing again. Yeah. I think, so. Wow, we've talked a lot about Cat Stevens. Okay, so. Um, we got to get all this crap yeah. down to the recital right, hall. Right, because we're doing a we're going to We're going to actually doing a concert tonight in, in like front a little, of human In a little over an hour and a half. Not in a studio, in front of actual so human beings. Yeah, so so in other words, let's let's go play. Or, or is it this? <laughs> let's go play. <laughs>